wonderful benefits. If God been good to you this morning, you ought to just take a moment and give the Lord a praise on this morning. That's good enough for somebody else. I say you ought to give the Lord a praise on this morning. For certainly the Lord has been better to us than we've ever even considered being to our very own selves. It is not in man to direct his own steps. We are not here in and of this moment. I thank you. I know you think you all there in the bag of chips. But let me tell you, if it had not been for God coming and saving you in the nick of time, if it had not been for God coming and saving you when you were at your wit's end, who knows where you would be this morning. But thanks be unto God that he did not leave you in the state that you were in but God has blessed you to where you are this morning and that's why you're here this morning because God has been keeping the devil off my back all week long he's been keeping the devil at bay he's been making ways out of no ways he's been providing for me so since he's been blessing me like that the least I can do is get up on Sunday morning and come out and give his name the praise that is so due to him Amen, amen. Y'all come here and like y'all want to have church this morning. I don't know. I don't know, but that's what y'all act like. You might be fooling me, but you act like you want to have church this morning. We're going to have church. Is that all right? We're going to have church. We're going to have church. We're going to have church this morning. Amen. So good to see everyone that is here. God bless you. We thank all of you that are visiting with us. We're so glad to have you. All of you that are visiting us via live stream this morning. We thank God for you. We bless God for you. Thank you for tuning in and be with us on this morning. I'm glad to have a special guest with me this morning, Brother Minister and Anthony Walker of the Highway 231 Church of Christ Day in Tennessee. So glad he and his family were passing through this morning. And they stopped by to be with us. We're so glad to have you all here with us this morning. All I got to ask you now is did anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? Amen. I believe you came to the right place. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 26. Genesis chapter number 26. And we're going to read verses um, 1 through 6. And then we're going to go over... Um, and we're going to read verses 12 to 14 for our consideration on this morning. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Pass me now, O gentle Savior, Lord, and hear my humble cry, Lord, and why, while on the side art calling, Master, and do not pass me, and y'all call him your Savior. Lord, and whom 
in heaven but and we're calling you oh sweet savior why don't you hear my my humble cry Genesis chapter 26, beginning at verse number one. And the Bible says, there was a famine in the land in addition to the one that had occurred in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines at Gerar. The Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land that I tell you about. Stay in this land as an alien and I will be with you and bless you. For I will give all these lands to you and your offspring, and I will confirm the oath that I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky. I will give your offspring all the lands and all the nations of the earth will be blessed by your offspring. Because Abraham listened to me and kept my mandate, my commands and my statutes and my instructions. Let us go to um, verses 12 through 14 and the Bible says Isaac sowed seed in that land and in that year he reaped a hundred times what was sown the Lord blessed him and the man became rich and kept getting richer until he was very wealthy he had flocks of sheep herds of cattle and many slaves and the Philistines were envious of him for our consideration of this morning let's read Verse number one, for emphasis sake, there was another famine in the land in addition to the one that had occurred in Abraham's time. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Pray with me if you will. Father God in heaven, it is indeed we are grateful. Grateful, dear Lord, that you bless us once more and again to come and sit down at the table of your word. Father, somebody's come this morning as an empty pitcher before a flowing fountain. Father, I pray that as your word is gone forth, that some soul will be touched in this place on this morning and that they would ask that question, what is necessary in order that my soul may inherit eternal life? Father, hide me behind your glorious cross that no flesh would take any glory in what you ought to have. And Father, we'll bless you for doing this so in Jesus' name that all of God's children say amen. Hey Amen. You know, you, know, you know the routine. Look at somebody this morning. Find you somebody this morning. Don't let somebody like they came to have church. Somebody they happy to be here. Ask them this morning, are you prepared for the famine? Now see, they didn't even know a famine was on the way. Look at the other person. Ask them, say, hey, are you prepared for the famine? Now, he says in the scriptures that we just read that there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, the Lord appeared to him and said, don't go down to Egypt, live in the land that I put you. Verse three, dwell in the land. I will be with you. I will bless you for you and your descendants. I will give you these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to your father Abraham. Verse six, so Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Verse 12, then Isaac sold in the land. What land? The land that was in famine. That's going to be important later on. And reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Verse 13. The man began to prosper. Continued prospering until he became not just prosperous, but very prosperous. That's a good one. Well, that's just a good verse 14. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of employees. I love this part. And the Philistines envied him. The ungodly. So I want to talk to you this morning and ask you that question. Are you prepared for the famine? Are you prepared when things dry up? Are you prepared 
when you're going through a tough time. I want to show you something in the word of God this morning. And when we talk about famine, we don't really understand famine. And even though we are still in the cups of a pandemic in America, I don't think many of us really know what it is to be in famine. When you talk about people that are in famine and you look overseas and underdeveloped countries and you see oftentimes little children where the stomachs are, are swelling out and one part is, is bigger than the other. And all of these things that entail with the famine that they are going through and usually there are two things that cause a famine to happen usually is either war or weather related in order for a famine to take place and there are all kinds of famine yeah and I say you got people dying you got crops failing you got disease you got swollen bellies you got everything no food no nothing and God said to Isaac stay right where you are I want you to see, church, the contrast between him obeying God and staying in the place that God said is in the land. It's given to you. This is yours. And just because you're in a famine don't mean that you're supposed to walk away from it. Just because it's not producing for you right now, don't quit. Don't pack your bags. Don't go somewhere else that looks better. God says, stay right where you are. I'm giving you a stay here command. Tell somebody stay right where you are I'm giving you a stay here command God said to Isaac I don't want you to be like your father Abraham I don't want you to be like Naomi I don't want you to go and try to find somewhere else to go I want you to stay right where you are I say Naomi because if you remember Naomi Naomi got into a family we're told about it in the book of Ruth and the Bible said that she was in the city, good God, in the place. She was in the Holy Land, y'all. She was in Bethlehem, which means the house of bread. She was in the house of bread, but it seems like there's been something wrong and that the house of bread became breadless. And she was without bread. And there was a famine in Bethlehem. And she and her husband and her two sons and their wives, you know, they got out of Bethlehem, the house of bread, and they went to Moab, which was a city, listen, 25 miles away from where they were originally. Now, I realized that they didn't have cars and buses and things like we had, but still, that's not really far. That's not really a great distance, and the people are starving. There's no food, and everybody is gone, and all of the other families have gone. So, Naomi, why don't you and your husband and your sons and your wives pack your bags and go to Moab? And that's exactly what they did. They went to Moab, but when they got there, they found out and heard that there was bread in Bethlehem. See, when you're in Bethlehem, church, when you are in God's house and it's breadless and there will be famine, tell somebody there will be famine. Now, I don't care how blessed and how called you are to a business or to a marriage or a job or to a ministry. There are going to be times when you are going to go through leanness. There are times when you are going to go through hardship. There are times when you are going to go through battles and you will have to learn how to persevere even in the midst of the battle. You got to. It's going to be hard, but you got to stay the course. It's going to be tough, but you got to stay the course. You can't be so quick to jump shit and hop over somewhere else that looks better all you're gonna do God told him stay right where you are and while you're there so into the land so into that marriage if you want it to be successful so into that business so into that relationship if you want it to be successful you know why are we always looking to get out of something easy why are we always looking to get out of something quick, get rich quick? And we don't understand that all the things you need, God has given you if you'll sow into the land. Tell somebody, sow into the land. But she gets over here in Moab. She gets over here in Moab, which is a cursed place, by the way. She left a tight of God's house. And sometimes, even in God's house, you go through a famine. I don't hear nobody. You, you go through dryness. You, you can't seem to hear from God. You can't really feel God. You, you come to worship and you don't really get much out of it. That's something we don't really want to be honest about, but it's the truth. We are sitting in the house of God and it's just another service because we ain't really feeling God. You ain't getting that out of it. Something feels dry. But what you need to do in the time of famine when you realize you're already in the house of bread 
Listen to me. When the house of bread is breadless, stay there until the bread comes back. Because if you ever find a place that ever fed you and God put you in, it's only a matter of time before the bread come back. Tell somebody the bread man on the way, the bread man on the way. Yeah, you thought it was over just because it got barren. You thought that it was the end because it did not produce when you wanted it to produce. It did not happen when you wanted it to happen. But God said, if you will stand still, if you will stay in the land, even though it looked bad, you're going to fool around and bloom after a while. You're going to fool around and something is going to if you stay in the land. But well, sometimes, church, God will allow us to go through famine to prove us, to test you, to see what's really in your heart. Sometimes it's better to stay in the house. My worst day in the house of God is better than my best day in the world. And you know what? I may be going through things and sometimes we feel like that. Listen to me, especially for those that are young. Sometimes it may look like everything out there in Moab is fun and there's no shortage of fun and the music and the party and all this other kind of stuff going on. And here I am in the house of God. When I first came to faith in Jesus, it was exciting. But now things have dried up and ain't nothing happening. I'm just, what do I do? Child? You take the word of God into the land. You sow it into the land you sow into your life get into serving let him sow and if you'll stay on track in God's house even when it is breadless God will make sure you get what you need to sustain listen to this a hundredfold somebody say a hundredfold now you can't get the hundredfold until you make it through the famine in that land that was famine is the land that brought forth a hundredfold. I think we need to understand what the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 17 and verse number 24. It says that wisdom is before the eyes of him who has understanding. But to the eyes of a fool, they are on the ends of the earth. Listen to that scripture. It says that wisdom is before the eyes of him who has understanding. Another way of saying that is that when you are a wise person, you begin to appreciate the people that you have around you. You begin to appreciate the things that you have around you, but the fool, his eyes are upon the ends of the earth. If I could have that, if I could be over here, if I was just over there, if I could go, you can see, if I didn't have this man, if I had another man, if I, if I didn't have have this job but I had another job you need to stop saying that stop acting like their life is better than yours because if you actually had the opportunity to swap you'll realize y'all just swapping problem because everybody got something going on stop worrying about what could have happened what should have happened what would have happened that's over and that's done with praise God for what is done praise God for what is doing praise God for what is getting ready to do in your life Now, when I think about God, listen to this. When I think about God, God, God uses church less than perfect places in life to do something in famine that feasting cannot do for us. God uses less than perfect places. He said, I'm telling you, Isaac, I'm telling you now, God shifts it. Now, now back in the story, he, but he says, Isaac, I don't want you to do like your daddy did. I don't want you to do like Naomi did. I want you to stay in the land. Don't go anywhere. I know it's not a perfect place. I know it's not as beautiful as Egypt was. See, Egypt had a river. So they were never in famine. And the enemy wants you to see the glitz and the glamour of the world. And he say, well, if you just do that and if you just do this. But the truth is, sometimes it's better when you are in a famine, stay right there where you are. When things are getting tough and getting rough, stay right there where you are. Haven't done all to stand, stand therefore. And so the word. 
And you may not, it may not be happening right now. The, the hundredfold may not come. All your friends may have gone over there. They seem like they're doing just fine without God. They seem like they're doing just fine with all the world. And here I am trying to live for Jesus. But I'm telling you, church, that there's something about sowing into your life when you're in a famine. So into that ground. God told Isaac, stay right there where you are. I want you to stay in this place. The word Jerah means to drag off roughly and to chew up. I'm telling you that my will for you is not easy or better or more comfortable. I'm telling you to stay in Gerard. Well, what is that? It's a place where you're going to be drugged off roughly. They're going to treat you ugly. They're going to chew you up and they're going to spit you out. Oh, and by the way, you're in a land with the Philistines all around you. They got box cutters. They got switchblades. They like to fight. They don't like nobody. They are war like people. You got all of that going on around you. And it would be so much easier to leave and to go over there to Egypt where everything looks fine. But I want you to stay where you're going to get drug off roughly. Where you're going to get drug off roughly, where you're going to get chewed up and spit out. Well, you're going to have to go through all kinds of stuff. And everybody over there, they ain't even living for God. Don't even try to live for God. They're doing so good. And here you are getting chewed up, getting spit out, getting drugged off roughly, treated wrong. And then warlike people are all around you. Anybody ever felt that way as a Christian? Anybody ever felt that way as a child of God? Any believer? You don't quit. You don't go back to the addiction. You, 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 you don't go back to that thing. You don't get out of here. You stay in the house of bread. And bread will come again, church. Even when it seems like it's breadless. You stay right there. You plant right there. And the Bible says that he sold. He sold into the land. What land? The famine. The dust bowl. Can you see him out there hitching up his mule and his path? Had rain in weeks, months, years. And this crazy man takes the only valuable possessions that he has left. A handful of hope seeds. His family. And what he does, church, with those seeds is going to determine if his family lives or dies. And he hitches that mule and that plow. And starts plowing that old dry ground. It ain't got no moisture in it, y'all. It's just like a dust bowl. If you had well looked at it from the vantage point, you could have seen just dust just coming up from everywhere. And he's out there just whistling and working like an old crazy farmer. He's plowing the mule. He's taking the seed. He's kicking the dirt on top of the seed and kicking it and dropping it behind the plow. And everybody thinking he's crazy. All of his friends have left, but God told him to stay right there. I'm saying to you, church, that Jesus Christ is a root out of dry ground. I don't hear nobody. I said Jesus Christ is a root out of dry ground. And some of the greatest things that God is going to do in your life is not going to be on the mountaintop while everything is going good. But some of the greatest things that God is going to do in your life will be in the middle of a famine. But you keep on sowing until you get a breakthrough. Tell somebody, sow until you get a breakthrough. Sow until you get. He found Lazarus on the fourth day after he was smelling of decay. He found David on the backside of the desert. He, God works in unusual places, surprising places. Found Moses out there in the desert. Found Job while he was in the midst of a trial. Found the three Hebrew boys while they were in the midst of a fiery furnace. Found Daniel in the lion's den. Found Elijah under a juniper tree trying to commit suicide, feeling sorry for himself. Found Jeremiah in a pit. Peter in a prison. Paul in a storm. And God said, I use surprising places. To bring my glory out of them. 
And if he's got you in one, don't run. If he's got you in one, don't you dare try to turn around. Don't pack your bag. You stand and you sow into the land. Do the best that you can with what you got. And God is faithful. I need somebody to say, God is faithful. And if you recognize that God is faithful, you recognize that even though, man, nothing is popping up right now, it ain't blooming right now. If I have faith that can hold on just a little while longer after a while the bread is coming back to the house they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up on wings as eagles they'll run and not get weary they'll walk and not faint give the Lord a praise in the house do the best you can with what you got and God will be faithful now here's my question to you. If you missed everything, get this. How well do you respond when God tells you, stay here? Oh, uh, it's your will to get away from it. It's your will to go in another direction. But how well do you respond when God said, no, 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 no. Stay right where you are. Even if you don't understand, and even when you're praying and nothing is happening, no breakthrough, how well do you respond when God says, stay right where you are? Because that's the only place that you can get a hundredfold. It's if you stay when everybody else leaves. God doesn't want you to be like everybody else. How do you respond when God says, stay right here. Don't leave. Don't move. Stand still. No clouds. No rain. No nothing. Stand still. Everybody else has left and gone. Stay right where you are. I'm preaching to some Isaacs. Your eyes are on the end of the world. And God says, everything that you've been thinking about is right in where you are if you'll sow into it. Because the Bible says that when he sold into, everybody say that, say the land, the land, the land. When he sold into the land, when he sold into the land, he didn't sow into what he wished it was. He didn't sow into what it ought to be. He didn't sow into I wish it were this and it ought to be that. He sowed into what he had. And the Bible says that he reaped a hundredfold in that land. Isaac sowed in that land and reaped the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Can you see him? For every seed that he put in that dusty dry ground. God gave, I can see him out there making rolls and dropping corn seeds and green bean seeds and potato seeds and cornbread seeds. And I preach it like I feel it. And, 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 all that, and, and tomato seeds and, and pork chop seeds. And, and are y'all hungry yet? Yeah, and all that good stuff. He's out there playing all that. But he was dropping all the seeds and he comes back and in that land for every seed of corn he dropped, a hundred corn of stock came up for him. Can you see him eating out there? Got all got buffet, all he can eat out there, y'all. And the Bible says that the Philistines envied him. Y'all know it's always some Philistines somewhere. It's always somebody somewhere. And if we're not careful, we'll allow what folk are saying. To get us out of the land. If we're not careful, we'll allow what everybody else is doing and what everybody else is focusing on to get us off of what God has called us to do. But I would have you to know right now, at the end of the day, every man got to plant his own crop. At the end of the day, not only does every man got to plant his own crop, you got to tend to your own God. Stop wondering why their seeds are coming up right now. Stop wondering why they look so green and it looks so plush and it looks like everything else is coming. God got a season. God got a time for everything and it may be happening for you today 
today, but if I can hold on just a little while longer, God gonna send it my way as well. So just because it's looking good over there, does not mean that I'm supposed to uproot and go simply because I'm experiencing a famine. It's a drought in the land. Nothing's going on. You ever, you ever, you ever, you ever come to church and it seems like as, as much as you have to try to pay attention sometimes, you don't get anything out of it? Be real with yourself. And sometimes we come and we leave the same way that we came. We come and we leave. We're praying for God to do certain things in our lives. And it seems like the prayers are not getting answered. And because it seems like that goes on longer than we would like, man, I got to find the next best thing. But what? Well, look green over there. Look plush over there. But God said, if you'll stay right where you are. And even in the barren land. Y'all just think about that. We sang the song about how he's a lily in the Who ever seen a lily in a valley? When you ever seen a rose in a Sharon? God shows up in the most unusual places. God shows up in the most unlikely places and does those things that we think are impossible. Of course, with us, it is impossible. But with God, oh, some things, a little bit of thing, all things are possible to him that believeth. Are you ready for the famine? Are you prepared? Can you handle it when God said, not right now? Can you handle it when what you've been praying so long for and wanting so bad, God said, I ain't going to give it to you. Can you handle it when just like Paul, you've been to God on several occasions, Lord, remove this thorn from my flesh. And God is saying, no, no, no. But my grace is going to be sufficient for your meaning. I'm going to get glory even out of your struggle. I'm going to get glory even out of the pain that you are experiencing. So I'm going to give you an everlasting reminder that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall feel no evil for God is with me. He's by my side. He's covering me. He got my back. He got me covered. So I can make it through the family. I can make it through. Now, 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 faith has to be a major part of sowing in dry ground. Because with your eyes, you looking, man, how this gonna work out? How this gonna happen? Man, did you see how tough this, this ground is? How can anything come, anything good come out of this thing? But God said, I don't need you to worry about the details. I just need you to stand right there and do what it is that I've already commanded you to. I need you to stop listening to what this person is saying. Stop listening to what that person is saying. Stop trying to get your orders from everybody else and ask God what his will is for your life. Stop trying to, because let me tell you, Steve Harvey on what marriage? A y'all look got problems. She can't fix your life. He's able. He's able to do exceeding and abundant. Above all that we can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So can I tell you something today? Even if you came for this morning with the weight of the world on your shoulders, even if you came in here this morning, burdened down, dealing with anxiety, battling depression, this is stuff that we go through we don't tell nobody about, but we got this stuff that we're dealing with. We can hardly look in the mirror at ourselves because of guilt and other feelings of uncertainty that we have on the inside of ourselves. But when I tell you, I don't care how weighed down you came in here this morning, 
I got a man here today that's ready to take your load. I got a man here this morning that said, cast all your cares upon me because I careth for you. I know a man that, guess what? He's in the business of cleaning people up. He's in the business of making people new. He's in the business of erasing everything that you've done and giving you a brand new start. He said that in any man being Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things shall become new. And I'm so glad, church, that he loved me enough that I was not an afterthought of God, but I was on God's first thought. The Bible says that for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined before the foundation of the world, before your mind ever met your daddy God had a plan for your life before you ever recognized who you were God had a plan for your life he told the prophet he said I knew you before you were ever formed in your mother's womb I know the very hairs on your head they are numbered and Deacon Star, you can be there in the mirror as a man said combing your hair and if one of your hairs get caught in the comb God knows that's hair number three million nine hundred and eighty nine thousand six hundred and seven the very hair on your head are numbered by God. He knows you. He knows your issues. He knows your worries. He knows your care. Stop trying to hide them from God. God knows exactly who you are. God knows exactly what you're struggling with. Give God your worries. Give God your cares. Give God that weight, that load that you are carrying. He'll bear it for you. He said that my yoke is easy. And my burden is also light. Will you let him take your load this morning? Will you let him bear it for you? I cannot bear these burdens alone. Jesus can help you. He's standing at the door of your heart even right now this morning. He's knocking. He's been knocking all the while, but you got so much other stuff going on that you can even, you can even hear him at the door. Stop treating him like the Jehovah Witness. Let him come in. Let him, let, let him come in and talk with you. Let him come in and bless your life. He's standing at the door of your heart even this morning, my brother, my sister. And you know this morning whether or not you stand yourself a guilty distance away from God. You know yourself even this morning that you are not in the right relationship with him. This is simply God giving you another chance, giving you another opportunity to correct those things in your life that need to be corrected. He's waiting on you this morning. He's waiting on you to say no to everything that you got going on and say yes to him. He's ready to make a difference in your life. Why won't you let him make a difference? Come by hearing his word this moment, this morning. The Bible says, so then faith, come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. After you've heard it, you must believe the same. Believe that he lived. Believe that he died. And believe that on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. After hearing you believe the same, now comes repenting of your sins. I, I, repentance is a change in my mind that simply produces a change in my action. After repentance, I confess with my mouth the sweetest name known to mortal tongue. And that is that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And after confession, be baptized for the remission of your sins. Allow him to put you into his body. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord, not Peterson, the Lord, not Kip, the Lord adds to the church daily such as should be saved. If you're here today and you're already a child of God, but you are dealing with your own famine right now. Maybe a famine even in your faith that you're struggling with this morning. Let us pray for you. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous, they surely avail as much. There's nothing that you got going on that's too big for God. There's nothing that you're struggling with that God cannot handle. So today, right now, not next week, today make the decision that you need to make. If you are subject to the invitation at this moment, I beckon, I plead, why not come to Jesus as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Mm -hmm.